My name is Trish Comstock. I'll say right off that I don't live in Linden, but I am uh, one of those environmentalists. Please Be speak into the microphone. Yes, okay. When you turn around and talk that way, okay. your voice is not heard. Okay, thank you. Um, and I really am concerned because, of course, there are no barriers. Uh, if the, the effluent or the toxins are supposed to go out into the ocean, uh, just as there are no barriers in the uh, air, if we have air pollution. So really, this is not just a Linden problem. It is for many of us. And so it really, to me, doesn't matter whether I live in Linden. I'm concerned for all the rest of us. Anyway, I am going to uh, read a statement <clears throat> by a woman who wrote it, who has been involved. She couldn't come tonight because she was ill. So I will, uh, uh, I will appreciate it if you'd let me do that. Okay, uh, she too. She says, uh, I am not a resident of Linden. I thank you for this opportunity to comment. My comments are entirely concerning the proposed PureGen plant and particularly any potential fast tracking of this. I understand that the subcommittee looking into the matter has recommended a scientist be brought in to certify that the facility can be operated safely. This must be an independent scientist, though, not one of or chosen by SCS Energy. That would be like asking the same doctor for a second opinion or the same plumber for a second estimate. I urge caution in allowing this facility to be built. Actually, I don't think it should be built. I am as panicked over global warming as anyone, but SCS Energy has not shown me that PureGen is safe. I do not buy their sales pitch. Uh, the uh, National Geographic magazine, uh, certainly not a reactionary publication tending to hyperbole, um, had an article in the January issue uh, entitled, Giant Carbon Vault Proposed Near New York City. And that explains that some scientists think there is potential to sequester CO2 offshore, such as SCS Energy is proposing, but then goes on to caution. On the other hand, keeping CO2 vaults so close to a metropolis may be disastrous should anything go wrong. For instance, the project carries the potential risk of triggering earthquakes. And uh, uh, that was uh, said by a Rutgers geologist and author of the Rutgers study cited in the National Geographic article, uh, whose name is Kent. And to quote him, he says, even though this is a seismically benign area, by overpressuring the rock a bit and changing local stresses, it's conceivable that earthquakes could be triggered. And uh, since that Haiti earthquake has occurred, we certainly don't want anything like that here. Anyway, the January issue of the Journal of the American Medical Association, a truly conservative publication, even within the medical realm, contains another cautionary article entitled Health and Safety Risks of Carbon Capture and Storage by two doctors, uh, Fogarty and McCallie. Despite widespread, this is a quote from that, uh, despite widespread political support for the technology, important and unanswered questions remain regarding CCS development. What risks to human health and safety are involved? How will CCS projects affect water quality in the aquifers? Can CCS at scale really work and can carbon dioxide storage be made permanent? The risks are substantial and to our knowledge have not been considered in the promotion of CCS technology. The potential, I'm almost done. The potential health risks of CCS include asphyxiation of humans and animals, compromise of safe drinking water supplies, uh, in addition to the well-known uh, cardiorespiratory diseases and mortality consequences of continued coal combustion. Under normal circumstances, carbon dioxide is a trace gas 
composing less than four tenths of gases in ambient air. Concentrations of carbon dioxide of more than seven to 10 percent pose an immediate threat to human life. Elevated partial pressures of carbon dioxide in the blood cause carbon dioxide <coughs> narcosis with delirium, somnol somnolence, and coma. And of course, if there were an accident, uh, you'd get all of these conditions. A large inadvertent release of carbon dioxide, as must be considered in a nationwide full-scale CCS program, would pose significant risks for asphyxiation to humans and animals in surrounding areas. The article continues to cite other dangers and cautions. I urge you again to note that all of the environmental groups active in New Jersey are opposed to the building of PureGen in Linden. The environment, health, and safety impacts of this facility affect more than just the residents of Linden, but all of New Jersey and Staten Island. Please do not put blind trust in the state or federal regulatory agencies to protect the environment and public health through the permit process. Um, and this facility would have to go, uh, the permit process of this facility would have to go through. Uh, they make exceptions, uh, I've known that in other instances. This would be as much a first for them as it is for you to consider. And there is the problem that SCS has hired a former NJ Department of Environmental Protection Commissioner as an advisor. Thank you for the opportunity to comment. I urge you not to allow SCS Energy to build this pure gen one in Linden. It's too experimental. It cannot be proven to be safe. Please do not put my life and the lives of other New Jersey and New York residents at such risk. And that's from Barbara Conover, who lives in Montclair. I thank you very much for your time.